Welcome. Okay, this one is going to be on gravitational potential energy. Uh, just like last time we had two different forms of gravitational force, uh, mg and capital G, m1, m2 over r squared, we're going to have two different types of poten gravitational potential energy. Um, they stem from the fact that when you do have a gravitational field, if you move a mass in the opposite direction to the field, when you do that, you um, gain potential energy. Anytime you move a mass opposite to the direction of the field, then when you let go, it will follow the field back down. And so we say that it has potential energy, gravitational potential energy. That's true in this field, and it's true in this field. Okay, well, if you remember from last year, you said that gravitational potential energy was MGH. Um, we're going to say that that's not PE anymore. That's the change in potential energy. We're going to use a U this year for, for potential energy. And um, so delta U sub G is equal to M times G. And with H, I'm going to call it a delta H. This gives you a difference in potential energy. between two points. That are a distance h apart. Okay, well, the other equation that we'll use this year is that absolute gravitational potential energy, potential energy anywhere in the universe, is equal to negative g m1 m2 all over r but not squared just like just just like uh, gravitational forces then this one is the more general case this one can only be used near the surface of the earth i'd like to show you that if we take the negative derivative of this potential energy with respect to r we do get force I'm going to derive that for you later, but let me just show you that if I take the negative derivative, that the force is equal to the negative derivative of u with respect to r. So the force is equal to the negative derivative with respect to r, and I'm going to write the function for u. It's negative g m1 m2 all over r. However, um, let me rewrite this so the r is on top. It'll be easier for you to see. So it's negative derivative with respect to r of, and I'm going to write this as negative g m1 m2 times r to the negative 1. Okay, let's take its derivative. Um, would you agree that these two, these two negative signs will cancel out? So I can, I can get rid of them. And then when I take the negative derivative, I'm going to get um, negative g m1 m2 r to the, i got to subtract 1 from there, so that makes it r to the negative 2. Well, that's just saying that the gravitational force is negative m1 m2 all over r squared. Okay, let me show you how to use this equation for gravitational potential energy then. If you wanted to calculate my potential energy as I stand here in my house, my gravitational potential energy, it's going to be um, negative g, the mass of me, the mass of the earth, times the distance between our two center of masses squared. Okay, the distance between our two center of masses, I'm sorry, that's not squared. It's just left to the first power. But the distance between our two center of masses is really the radius of the Earth, if you think about it. That's how far my center is from the Earth's center. It's about one Earth radii. Let's plug in the numbers. So I put in negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 12. Newtons times meters per second squared, kilograms squared. That's G, times the mass of me. I'm about 75 kilograms. The mass of the Earth, that's about 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. 
And then the radius of the Earth would be 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. When you plug in all that, what you're going to get in your calculator is the following. You're going to get that a negative, that I have a negative 4.69 times 10 to the ninth joules. That's about 5 billion joules of negative potential energy. Now let me tell you what the negative means here. The negative, when you have a negative energy, potential energy, that, that means that you are bound. All potential energies are negative. It's the difference of potential energies that can be positive, but the but all potential energies are um, I'm sorry, gravitational potential energies are, are always negative. So gravitational potential energies are negative. And um, if I wanted to be free from the Earth, you'd have to give me this much energy, but in a positive value, in the form of kinetic energy. If you gave me 4.69 times 10 to the 9th joules of kinetic energy, that would be a lot of kinetic energy. I would um, never come back to the Earth. I, I could I could be I could be shot up and never come back to the to the earth. That's the minimum amount of energy I would need to leave the earth. So one more time, the negative tells you you're trapped. If you have a total mechanical energy of that is negative, then you're trapped or bound. But if you have a positive value, then you're free of anything. All right. See you in a bit.